everyone, welcome back to a new reading vlog for the week. Uh, it's Monday, it's technically Waitangi Day here in New Zealand. It was actually technically yesterday, but in New Zealand, if a public holiday falls on the weekend, it gets Mondayized, so it just means that it gets carried over to the next Monday and we'll get a day off, which is nice. We are home, I mean I'm home anyway all this week, I still have another week of recovery from my surgery, I'm feeling really good, ear is uh, doing its thing, hearing things, which is amazing, honestly, if this is what it's like to hear things like normal people, it's blowing my mind at just how deaf I was or how little hearing I had before. Thank you to the doctors and the nurses and science. So I thought I would quickly start this vlog and talk to you a little bit about what it is that I'm reading at the moment. Um, I know in my last vlog I did say you could help me pick but I already knew what I wanted to read so there was no point. So I'm reading Friends in Dark Shapes by Kavita Bedford. This was kindly sent to me by Text Publishing. Uh, they're an Australian publishing house. Put this book out. So thank you very much. I am enjoying it so much. It is split into four seasons. So it starts with spring and I have just started summer. I'm really enjoying it. So it's narrated by an unnamed na young woman who is a the child of an immigrant mother and an Australian father. She is at the beginning of the book moving into a, a house share or like a flat with three other people um, who are all a similar age, kind of like about to turn 30. Similar life situations where they are all kind of in this liminal <laughs> space waiting for the next step in life but not really knowing what that is or how to get there. Um, lots of really interesting discussions about gentrification. It's set in Sydney, but specifically the house that they live in is in Redfern, which is a, a suburb just outside of the city in Sydney. I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's very kind of, it's very much made up of conversations or moments between the flatmates, other young people that they know, people that this, the main narrator is meeting through her job as a journalist. I'm really looking forward to reading more of this today. And then I'm also reading Little Words by Jenny Slate. I've read a lot of depressed women single narrative stories lately and they just needed something with a little bit of levity to it. This was one of the books that I had on my bedside table for my recovery that I thought would be a comfort read. I don't know whether it's a comfort read but it's definitely light-hearted it's whimsy and weird obviously i don't think it was quite what i expected it's quite childlike and naive so far a lot of the time i don't really know what it is she's trying to say but i'm trying not to be too pessimistic about this book and just take it for what it is which is just a little bit of fun right we're allowed that in our reading sometimes renee you're allowed to read fun things so that's that's what I'm reading at the moment. I'm still listening to the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois. Still really enjoying it. I want to try and finish it this week. I'm honestly not bothered if it takes me a bit longer because it's just one of those nice things that I quite like listening to when I'm like doing a little bit of housework or like going for a walk. Quite enjoying like the drama of the family of Ailey and Garfield's family. And she is this quite kind of like, she's this real kind of sassy character as she's growing older. And she's kind of looking forward to seeing how her story progresses. That's the 411, that is what we are doing today. Excuse my very noisy dishwasher. Just making a toasted sandwich for lunch. I've been listening to my audiobook all day. Um. Love songs of W. E. B. Du Bois, and I thought I would maybe do a little quick update on how that's going. I'm really enjoying it. It's a sprawling book, though. Like a lot is happening, and a lot has happened. 
I'm not even 50% of the way through it yet, so I don't know if I'm going to finish it this week. I'm enjoying um, kind of being a part of this family's life. I did have to download like the family tree uh, online to be able to follow what is happening. But the timeline that was originally being told in the 1700s has moved quite a bit um, towards the kind of present day timeline. Um, so now the main character, Ailey, Ailey Garfield, um, her mother's kind of story is being told. So we're just kind of one generation before now. And all some things happened that I'm sure her kids don't know about. Which, I mean, that's the way that families are. You... When you have a big family, when you have a massive family history, you find out some things. And it is, I mean, it is what it is, right? I don't think anyone is without a bit of family drama or a story or something, something that's happened, which is, I love, I love stories about a family's history, where they've come from, the things that they went through. I gotta check my sandwich. Okay, I've definitely burnt one side of my sandwich, but it's still gonna be good. Yeah, I love I love a deep family history story. So this book is perfect. It's been such a pleasure to listen to as well. I think on a right oh I came out of my earring. I think also the language and the writing is really beautiful. Honoré for Nine Jeffers is a poet, so the consideration to not only how it reads, but seemingly how it hears or how it is heard is just stunning. I think the narrators of the audiobook do a great job of capturing the characters, but also the kind of the melodic, um, sing-songy writing as well so yeah I'm really enjoying it that is my update on the audio I'm hoping I can finish it this week it's Tuesday I've got 17 hours left to go on it so who knows might might have to do some intense listening over the next week but I'm really enjoying it and I would really recommend it on audio but also I think it would be a beautiful book to read as well and just take your time with it. Okay I'm gonna eat my toasted sandwich now. Okay, okay so it's definitely a little burnt but it's gonna be great. Cream corn and cheese. Tell me what your go-to toasty filling is. I'll put just about anything in a toasted sandwich and eat it. Anything with bread and cheese and a chance to melt it all together, I'm there. Okay, I was just watching uh, Tammy. Tammy's January wrap up, so Tammy from Tams can read. And she was talking about my, my year of rest and relaxation. She read that in January. She didn't really like it. Um, but she mentioned like the thing that happens at the end and I've recently noticed this when I've seen reviews of it or people talking about it like oh the the twist at the end or like I don't want to say what happens but I don't know whether I can't remember I remember sleeping a lot when I read that book like falling asleep while reading it so I can't remember whether I missed that part but honestly don't know what anyone is referring to when they say what happens at the end. So I just went and looked back at it and I swear that I somehow missed that. Like whether I thought that the last chapter, like that one page, was some kind of um, like epilogue and just didn't read it. But yeah, I don't, I don't remember that happening. So 
Hmm. Kind of making me think I should go back and read the whole thing because um, I did enjoy it, but how how did I miss that? Anyway. 5% battery, let's see if I can do this really quick. Um, I finished reading Friends in Dark Shapes last night and it was good, I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it was a really kind of funny, interesting read, a good for a debut. I shouldn't say that. It was good. Um, I did feel like towards the end I kind of, because there was so much going on in the book, like it tried to address a lot of topics. Towards the end I kind of just started to glaze over a bit and wasn't really taking a lot of it in. Um, I haven't really read much today, but I have been listening to my audiobook for most of the day because I've been doing a lot of housework. It's getting, well, it kind of has been quite intense the whole time. And some of the content in it is like really disturbing. Obviously, there's a lot of historical stuff about slaves and the way that they were treated, but even a lot of the present day characters dealing with terrible things that have happened to them and like drug use and that kind of stuff it's getting quite intense so i think i need a break from it today um i did start white on white by asagul savas last night just the first chapter and i really can't say more than that other than it's about a young student who is doing a postgrad perhaps on gothic nude statues sculptures and has moved to this I don't know unnamed city into an apartment that belongs to uh, an artist named Agnes who her only stipulation is that if this person if this student wants to move in that she sometimes comes and stays at the apartment in the studio upstairs and that um, they'd have to share things like the kitchen. And that's it. I think it's going to be a bit of academia, not, I would say dark academia, but no, because it's like a book about this artist who paints white mostly, so light academia, I don't know. References to a lot of art, which I think will be really interesting. I'm interested to see the relationship between the the unnamed narrator and this artist Agnes and what happens there as well because surprise surprise Agnes turns up and they end up spending a lot of time together I think yeah I'm gonna sit back and read some of this now I might also try to read some more pages of Jenny Slate it's just not something that I'm like wanting to pick up just because of how like obnoxiously sweet it feels at times and I know that's just me because a lot of people have talked about how much they love this book. Just trying to accept it for what it is. Kelda, happy Friday. It's like 4.30 in the afternoon and the tradies next door have finally stopped making a whole bunch of noise. Because I haven't been able to film anything all day because every time I turn the camera on, they make noise. So it's finally stopped, I think. So I thought I would jump on and do a little reading update but also talk about some books that I acquired yesterday. I haven't been doing much at all this week uh, apart from sat here on the couch reading um, but yesterday I did take myself out on a little date which was really nice. Nice to just like sit in a cafe and eat some food and read a book and be by myself because I love doing that. Uh, yeah, so I'll quickly run through the books that I picked up. Picked up some library books. Self-Portrait in Green by Marie 
uh, Ndiaye, translated from the French. Just a sort of short little novella about a woman who becomes obsessed with these um, these mysterious green women. That's what it says on the back. Um, and starts to kind of seek them out. And in turn we see two very different sides of her. I think it might have a lot to do with like mental health and whether or not her recollection of things can be trusted. So that sounded quite good. And I picked up The Undressing, which is a collection of poetry by Lee Young Lee. I saw this on Ben Green's Instagram and I thought it would be interesting to try it out because I'm all about trying out new poetry now. Um, speaking of, I picked up Claudia Rankin's Citizen, which is a collection of poetry slash essays that I've heard amazing things about. So I grabbed that one. Um, then I went to a secondhand bookshop and I purchased this delicious copy of The Shipping News. I say delicious because it's super floppy and I don't know whether this is just like, in, this is intentional, but it's like perfectly yellowed around the edges, almost like a vignette. Um, and it really suits the, the feel of this book. Um, but yeah, I picked this up after seeing Rebecca's January wrap up and the way she described it sounded really good. Read the first, the first few pages and the writing seems really fun, so decided to get into that. Lastly, I went to a bookshop that I've wanted to visit for a long time, Lamp Light Books in Parnell. Stunning, 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 stunning bookstore. Just visually, when you walk in, it is beautifully laid out, beautifully curated. The selection they have is amazing. I could have spent hours there. Staff was so helpful and lovely, and I will definitely be going back. Um, but I picked up five books, two were poetry recommendations from staff who worked there. So quickly, I'll just reel them off. The Week Spot by Lucy Alvin. Um, I have seen this floating around on Instagram. It says here, the weak spot is a fable about our longing for cures, answers, and an audience, and the ways it will be exploited by those who silently hold power in the world. Let me give it a go. Next, I have Untold Night and Day by Bay Swa, which is translated from the Korean. Um, there was just a line here on the back. It said, unfolding over a night and a day in the sweltering summer heat. Reading that line made me feel like I could be instantly transported to, into the story right now because it's the middle of summer here. It was freaking hot yesterday. It's something about that that just captured me. So picked it up. So gorgeous kind of foil in the front. Then I got Terminal Boredom by Izumi Suzuki, which I've heard a lot of great things about collection of stories that are quite like dystopian and maybe a little bit weird. We like weird dystopian art, oh, also translated from the Japanese. So two translated works. Um, and then the poetry collections that I picked up were Drop There by Evelyn Arulian. She is a young, this is her debut collection of poetry, young Australian, um, the girl in the shop said that it was really good, really beautiful prose type poetry, so um, I was keen for that. Somebody else also recommended this to me on Instagram, so that's why I picked this one up. And then lastly, Postcolonial Love Poem by Natalie Diaz. She is a Native American indigenous uh, to... California poet and again apparently supposed to be quite stunning similar kind of themes I think of colonialism in both the countries so Australia and in America but from a Native American perspective um, which I really really want to read more of so that one definitely was sold to me from that 
Um, those are the books that I picked up. Just want to do a quick reading update because I have been reading. Um, I'm really enjoying my audiobook. It is starting to get to a really kind of intense, intense situations, lots of kind of graphic, um, depictions of violence and abuse in both. Um, stories that are running kind of alongside they're starting to also converge so it, as that is happening it feels like the descriptions of everything as the character the main character Ailey is getting older it's becoming much more violent and real world so dealing with being an adult confronting her childhood trauma the abuse that she and her sisters endured and then um, parallel to that is the history of her family and the land that they um, lived and worked on and were slaves on and just the absolutely horrific evil things that are happening to those characters in that timeline as you can imagine. So there are moments where I am having to really just like pump the brakes on it, can't listen to it as much as I was, um, but I am really enjoying it and I really want a physical copy of it because just the writing, again I've said this so many times, it's so nice to be read to but I just really want to get a physical copy as well and underline some pages and paragraphs that I've been bookmarking. But that's going really well. I've only got like eight hours left of it, which is still pretty long, but for a 30 hour audio book, I've got, quite, I've got through quite a bit of it. Um, lastly, I just want to talk about Little Weirds. Uh, it's, it's really hard to picture anything else other than it being this cutesy, naive, childlike story. And there's no real depth or change of pace um, in it for me. It's just constant. It's this, and it's really nice. It's like sweet and endearing and lovely, and like joyful, and that is what it is. But I'm just finding it really hard to um, process that constantly. There's no kind of peaks and flows or. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of struggling with it, but I'm kind of interpreting it as her way of dealing with grief and trauma and hard things in life, just this kind of reverting back to childhood, being quite naive, um, looking at things from a much kind of simpler point of view. There are some really nice, like, standalone passages, sentences that I have highlighted that you can take out of context and that they are really nice but I don't know as a whole it's kind of like it's a bit sickly it's like having too much sugar and so you need a break from it which I don't know is that something that anyone else experienced with this book or am I just like completely cold hearted let me know um, and then finally, White on White by Asagul Savas, which I am about, oh I lost my page, I'm about 80 pages through, but um, not a lot is happening in this book, it's definitely not a book that has any kind of plot, it's mostly made up of conversations, interactions between the student living in this um, apartment and the artist woman who owns the apartment who's come to stay in the city while she visits her gallerist. Um, it's also revealed at one point that the husband has suggested that she stay a bit longer so there is some kind of fracture there happening in her life and she seems very lonely. She is kind of clinging to this young student um, or by trying to like impart wisdom to her by forcing these conversations on her a lot. This, 
the student who's the narrator of this book is oh it's also not um stated whether or not the, the student is female or male so I should not say she um but I'm assuming it's a female because I'm at a point where she's talking about the artist Agnes is talking about friendship and she is comparing an old friendship she had with this other mother years ago when they first had children um, with this new friendship that she's developing with this the student or the narrator the narrator is becoming slightly annoyed by these these kinds of interactions that she is having with Agnes and yeah there are just little moments where she feels like she doesn't really have a choice in what is being kind of said to her or the things that are being imparted to her so that is kind of quite interesting and then the only other thing that's happening in the story is that uh, the narrator who is studying um, gothic nude statues uh, for her, I'm guessing some kind of like masters or doctorate. That's the only other thing that's happening alongside it. Ooh. Um. So I, I'm thinking there are some parallels between like that art and something to do with. Uh, the way that we kind of present ourselves, the things that we um, hide when we first meeting people and getting to know them, um, but that's kind of not as obvious. So that's something that I'm just drawing from, some of the things that she's describing about these um, works of art and the historical significance they have so I'm really enjoying it it's reminding me of Husk a little bit just the the recalling of the conversations and them being quite um, mundane every day um, yeah there doesn't feel like there's a lot of like importance being um, Put into them but they feel important in that way as well yeah I'm not saying that I don't think that um it's any better or worse than cask but it is just reminding me of that a little bit um, and that's my little update Rupert just bought me a samosa so I'm gonna eat that and keep reading my book okay bye bye morning happy saturday it's already very hot and humid and it's only 9 30 and i look like a sweetie pig and rick and i are going to go have some breakfast somewhere we haven't decided where yet um but just to be out of the house today would be nice i've also had the urge to clean all the couch covers, wash them and dry them, which is nearly impossible in humid weather, but I've put them in our spare room with the dehumidifier on, so, and that seems to have worked. So I did that, and then this morning when I was reading my book, the character in my book talks about having the urge to want to do that too, and does it in the book, which is just completely coincidental but I love that kind of stuff um I'm really enjoying this I also have this deep urge to want to annotate in this library book but I won't but I definitely want my own copy um yeah some really interesting things going on in this book I think I mentioned yesterday the Agnes the artist in the book is seems very lonely she, and it's kind of been revealed that perhaps she doesn't have the best marriage her husband doesn't seem all that nice of a person um and so 
she is constantly kind of reaching out to the narrator wanting to not only just have something to talk to but have someone like understand her deeply which I don't think she has ever had or had the opportunity to her children aren't really interested in the idea of her as her own person um, they see her just as their mother she is kind of clinging to this person because she wants she needs that yeah that's about it um, um the plan is just to finish the three books that i'm currently reading this weekend because i'm going to start a buddy read on monday and i don't i want to try to read as much of that as i can i just don't think juggling multiple books at a time will be good for it so that is the goal if it's going to a work thing this evening so i'll just be chilling by myself hopefully couch covers and stuff will be dry by then because I need to be able to sit on the couch. Yeah, it's about it. It's hot. It's humid. I ordered a takeaway. Um, I got Thai food and of course a Coca-Cola because I'm disgusting. <coughs> um, fried rice and a Penang curry that they wrap in glad wrap so it doesn't spill everywhere um excited for a night in Saturday night party glass of bubbles coca-cola delicious Thai food and I'm gonna watch the shit show but I can't not anyone else watching the sex in the city reboot I know it's terrible but I'm a hardcore fan of sex in the city and I can't help myself does anyone else have this thing where <clears throat> they get to like the last tiny little bit of their book like almost finished really won't require much effort at all probably just like half an hour's worth of reading and just not want to finish it or just like not want to read this happens to me all of the time and it doesn't matter if i'm enjoying it or not enjoying it i am really enjoying this book but i've got 20 pages to go and i just like have no desire to read it i've been playing my game on my phone and snapchatting my friend who's also at home doing very similar things to me right now sitting on the couch drinking wine watching bad tv that kind of stuff uh, i edited my meme moji on my phone because you know the hairstyles changed recently so i had to make sure that that the meme moji was up to date like i'm just doing whatever i can to avoid finishing this and I don't know why I'm like this. It is so shit outside today. Probably hear that wind. It's starting to rain again. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a miserable day, but nice to be inside. I'm going to wrap up this vlog because I have to go back to work tomorrow and I really want to get myself in the right mindset for that, so... I'm just going to spend the rest of the day chilling. might edit a little bit of this vlog, but I don't want to be attached to my computer all evening. So this might not go out for a few days. It's okay. Um, I did finish White on White last night. And it was really good. I really liked it. I thought it was a really kind of contained novel everything that happens and it happens between these two characters um really and the kind of intimacy in that felt really nice and just kind of like quiet and closed in which i quite liked um and i know i keep comparing it to rachel cask but it really was quite reminiscent of her narrators in the Outline Trilogy, her narrator, sorry, in the way 
they recall these stories or these encounters um, with other people it was very similar. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed it. I would recommend two fans of Cask and Quiet novels. It had a slight kind of sinister feel to it in terms of the character Agnes and her kind of slowly beginning to unravel in some ways. Um, yeah, I really want my own copy, so I will be trying to source that, but possibly a favourite of the year, but who knows, we'll see. I don't like to count my eggs before chickens. I don't like to count my chickens before they hatch. Yep, we'll go with that. Um, almost finished, a lot of weirds, but I don't think my opinion of it will change much in the last 20 pages. It's sweet, it's childlike, it's naive, it's light, it's fun. And for all those reasons, I I didn't not like it, it's just, it was hard to take that much of, of that one thing. For all those reasons that I listed, I, I know that other people will really love it, it's just, I didn't quite, mm, I couldn't quite latch on to that, so, so yeah, those are my probably final thoughts on Little Weirds by Jenny Slate. But that's me wrapping this up. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry that this week has been... Well, no, I'm not sorry. It's just been a bit of a low-key week this week, and it is what it is. I hope you'll have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next time. Kakite.